<clears throat> hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you to the second review in the Sylvester Stallone movie review series. And today I'm going to be reviewing the movie that made Sylvester Stallone a superstar. There we go. Um, the one, the only, the original, the classic, Rocky. Um, I wanted to show off this laser disc. This is the original laser disc release because I really like this picture. And I had actually never had seen this picture until I bought this laser disc. Um, I do have the film. I have the the widescreen edition laser disc that came out when the f first DVD came out. It was either the first or second DVD came out. They did a, They actually released it on laser disc one more time in widescreen. I also have the two disc. Uh, collector's edition. I think it's the 30th anniversary edition. It came out when uh, Rocky Balboa came out. And of course I have it on VHS. But uh, Rocky, I mean, how do you review a movie like Rocky? Honestly, you know. But um, before I get started, I might as well get this out of the way. Yo, Adrian! I figured people would want to hear me say that. So I figured I'd say that, you know, before I get into the review. But again, you know, how do you review a film such as Rocky? You know, Rocky, I think it it, uh, it definitely is one of the greatest movies of all time. Definitely one of the greatest sports movies of all time. I mean, there's no doubt about it. People that don't think that are idiots. I I'm sorry if that sounds unpolitically correct, but I'm not politically correct. But Rocky is definitely one of the best films of all time. You know, because of just everything that went into this movie and everything that came out of this movie. Um, you know, Sylvester Stallone, you know, wrote this movie after watching a boxing match, you know, and he said countless times, you know, that the only way you're really going to make it is if you, if you push yourself, you know, if you, if you get yourself out there. And that's what happened, you know, he wrote Rocky and they, the audience, the people love the script. The studio loved the script, and, you know, they wanted, like, a big-time actor to play it. And he said, no. He's like, the only way that you're going to get this movie from me is if I play this character. And they took a gamble. They took a huge gamble on Stallone, but the movie was so successful and so popular that it all worked out. So there you go. But, um, you know, on the back here, like, with a lot of laser discs, you do get some production notes. And that's basically what it says on the back here. You know, here, yeah, here it says, you know, he decided that if the breaks wouldn't come his way, he'd create his own, literally. He wrote the script for Rocky and began to sell it to the Hollywood studios. Although there was great interest in the script, Stallone held out for the starring role. That lessened the interest. Finally, the astute producing team of Robert Chartoff and Erwin Winkler gave Stallone a chance. They bought the script for a fair price and cut Stallone in for a large chunk of the profits, assuming there would be some. The rest, as they say, is history. This little-known writer and actor became an overnight sensation. Rocky went on to garner ten phenomenal box office receipts, received... A, uh, received 10 Academy Award nominations and won the all-important title of Best Picture of the Year. There you go. The movie won the Oscar for the Best Movie of the Year. Those who have a tendency to disbelieve the story of Rocky Balboa, the hero, might do might do well to take a look at the story of Rocky the film. Exactly. You're exactly right. The film was a huge financial success. It was a huge critical success. It was nominated for 10 Academy Awards it won Best Picture. So there you go. So all these people out there that say Sylvester Stallone is not a good actor, you, have you not seen Rocky? Have you not seen this movie? What are you talking about? You're fucking delusional. I'm sorry. Stallone's not a good actor. I guess you never heard of Rocky. I guess where you come from, Rocky never existed. You dumb fucks. But, I, you know, I'm sorry. I get upset when, oh, Stallone can't act. What the fuck are you talking about? He got nominated for an Oscar and he won, you know, the film won for best film. So fuck off. <laughs> but, you know, Rocky, like I said in the 
the like my history with Stallone. People love underdogs, and at this time in America, you know, we didn't really have any heroes. You know, they didn't have superhero films back then. You know, Bruce Lee had died. You know, you basically just had Clint Eastwood and John Wayne, but they were like the cowboy movies, you know, where the, the you know, Dirty Harry, the, the first few Dirty Harry films were already out. But I really think that the American people wanted a real hero, someone that they could relate to, someone that they could possibly know. And I think Rocky was that guy because... You know, Rocky was this guy from the hood, you know, who was just this tough guy. You know, he was a boxer. He had a tough life. You know, he's a loan shark. You know, he's not necessarily the smartest guy out there. You know, he is a little slow, but he's got a big heart, and that's what, what matters. You know, everybody knows him. You know, hey, Rock, you know, what's going on? How you doing? You know, how was your fight? Everybody knows who he is, and... You know, he's just this normal guy, this regular guy, who gets this opportunity, this million to one shot, to make something of himself, to go the distance, to make something out of his life. And he succeeds. He didn't win the fight, because I think a lot of people forget that, you know, I think they just assume, oh, well, he wins, because he's Rocky. No, the first movie, he didn't win. You know, Apollo Creed won. But, and the last movie, he didn't win either. Rocky Balboa, he didn't win the fight. But there you go. But, you know, he just gets this shot. All I want to do, like he says, you know, in the scene before the fight with Adrian, you know, when he's laying in bed with her, all, you know, he says, all I want to do is go the distance. All I want to do is prove to people that I'm not just another bum from the neighborhood. And that's, there you go. I mean, that's, that's the character, you know, Rocky is that guy he's that regular guy he's that normal guy that we all know but he gets this incredible opportunity and he's the underdog because you don't think that he's going to make it you know you don't think that he's going to win but at the end of the movie it, you know he didn't win technically but the people loved him the people were chanting his name you know he was the number one son of philadelphia after that so there you go i mean it doesn't matter if you win or lose, it's if you go out there and you give it your all, which he does. And I, that's what I'm saying, you know. The character, I think, is what, you know, made people very happy. Because, like I said, at the time, you know, the Vietnam War was over. You know, we were, the country was in a depression from that and from other things. Because, you know, we lost Vietnam, the morale was down. You know, Watergate was going on. All these different scandals and stuff were going on. There wasn't a lot of hope left. Like I said, you know, you had Dirty Harry, you know, you had John Wayne. But people, I think, were just getting tired of that. People wanted to see a regular hero, a regular guy. And that's where Rocky comes in. You know, Rocky's that normal guy. Like I said, you know, he's a little slow. You know, he's not all there, but everybody loves him, you know, hey, Rock, how you doing, what's up, you know, how was your fight, you know, he's that character, and that's why people love these movies, even now, almost, you know, 40 years later, I know I screwed up, my Lord's a Flatbush review, I said 30-some years, and that movie's 40, so I screwed up, I apologize, but this movie is almost 40 years old, almost 40 years later, People are still talking about these movies. People still love these movies. They're still showing these movies on TV. They're still making DVDs and Blu-rays of these movies. Not with features, which is bullshit, but they're still... People still love these movies. Excuse me. You know, people still love these movies. I, You can't... How do you explain that? You know, how do you explain the phenomenon of Rocky? And that's the thing, I think that, you know, like I said, Sylvester Stallone, you know, he wrote the movie, but, you know, he wanted to do this, you know, at the time that he did this movie, he said, you know, he was, he was flat on his ass, he was broke, he had like a hundred bucks to his name, you know, his career was literally going nowhere, and he knew that, you know, if, like I said, like I read here, he knew that if 
nobody was going to give him that chance. You got to make your own. And I believe that, you know, I don't really believe in luck. You know, you got to, you want to be lucky. You got to go out there and you got to make your own luck. You got to make your own path. You can't wait for people to come along and, and give you that opportunity. You got to go make that opportunity yourself. And that's essentially what Stallone did with this film, you know, and Stallone was, and again, like, you know, oh, Stallone's not a good actor. Look at the actors in this film. You know, look at the, the cast. You have Talia Shire, who was in The Godfather, Francis Ford Coppola's sister. You know, um, <clears throat> Carl Weathers, who was an athlete. He played football and everything, and he went on to have a very successful career because he did Rocky, he did Action Jackson, he did Predator. He's done all these films. Uh, Burgess Meredith was the Penguin from the Batman TV series, and he's been in a ton of movies, May God Rest His Soul. And, you know, you got Burt Young, Paulie. You know, he's been a great actor. He's been in a lot of films. You know, you have a great cast in all of these Rocky films. And you mean to tell me that Stallone's not a good actor? What are you talking about? If Stallone wasn't a good actor, why would he be in a movie with talent such as that? Or look at Copland. You know, Copland, you got Ray Liotta, Harvey Keitel, Robert De Niro, Robert Patrick. You got all these great actors and... People are like, well, Stallone's not a good actor. Well, what are you talking about? If he wasn't such a good actor, why would he be in movies like that? But... What the fuck? I guess she's done. <laughs> That's my mom. I guess she's out there shoveling or whatever. But, I mean, you mean to tell me that Stallone's not a good actor? I mean, come on now. What the? What are you talking about? But, you know, Rocky is just such a great film. You know, how do you, like I said, how do you review it? I mean, I could sit here all day, literally, and talk about Rocky. But, you know, I'm trying to keep it, keep it good here. But, you know, like I said, people love underdogs. And I guess that's why... Again, you know, 40 years later almost, people are still talking about these movies. People still watching these movies. Like I said, they're still making Blu-rays. Now, the only one that has features is the first one and the last one, which is bullshit, but I don't understand that. But anyway, like, I just don't, you know, I, I, how do you, like, explain that? You know, how do you explain why this character is still popular? Why people still love these movies, this character, you know, it's just, it's hard to believe, it's hard to imagine that, you know, um, again, almost 40 years later, people are still talking about him, people still are wearing Rocky t-shirts and, and, you know, got the video games and, and are using the quotes in daily life, you know, but it's, it's really hard to believe, you know, how do you sum all that up you can't you can't explain that how do you i mean you you cannot it's just it's unbelievable it really is it's really unbelievable after all these years it truly is but you know the film like i said has a great cast i think that everybody did a fantastic job in this movie you know you you, you who who else could have played these parts you know really Honestly, who else could have played these characters the way that these guys and gals did? You know, the movie has a great soundtrack, of course, you know, Gonna Fly Now. Everybody remembers that. I mean, you know, and just the score by Bill Conti. I couldn't think of his name for a second. But the score, you know, was great. All the music was great in the film. You know, I got all this. Actually, he did all the ones except Rocky IV. I have all the soundtracks somewhere. But, yeah, I mean, the music is just fantastic. You know, it makes you, you know, especially Gonna Fly In Now. You know, it makes you feel good. It makes you want to get pumped up. It makes you want to go out there and do something with your life. You know, that's what the, you know, how, how a lot of these films' music should be. Not nowadays... Because nowadays all the music's the same. It's all like the music in these films is all the same now. 
You know, they don't get creative with the scores anymore. It's the same, you know. Or they use shitty songs, you know. At least in Rocky, you know, they wrote songs, you know, Take You Back, do, 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 take you back, yeah, yeah. You know, Frank Stallone sang that. That's a, I love that song. You know, the movie, is, the soundtrack is just amazing. You know, like I said, it gets you pumped up. It gets you going. You know, it's like, all right, you know, let's go. Let's get out there. Let's do something. You know, let, let's, let's, let's get moving on this. Makes you feel good, and that's what it's all about. And I think that the whole movie itself, all the scenes in the movie itself are great. You know, the movie is just full of great scenes. Scenes that make you feel good. And again, like I was saying in the review for The Lords of Flatbush, the transitions are very good in this film. You know, the way that, you know, first the movie opens, you know, Rocky's fighting, you know, he has this fight, you know, he wins, you find out how much money he gets, he cleans up, he goes to see Adrian, you know, he tells Adrian this joke, then he goes to see his boss, his boss is telling him, hey, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta go break this guy's thumb, you know. Then he goes to the gym, you know, who took, you know, who took over my locker, you know, why you put my stuff on Skid Row, you know, great stuff, you know, then he goes to see Adrian again, he tells a different joke, he goes to see Paulie, he goes to see Little Marie, you know, screw you, creepo, you know, the movie, the transitions just move really well, you know, it just moves so well, you know, here, and then here, and then, okay, you want to fight Creed, you know, you want to be a sparring partner, no, we want you to, you're in the fight, you know, it's about you, and okay, and you know, I can't do this, you know, why, you know, Mick, you know, at least you had a prime, you know, why now, like, I came to you and you didn't want to help me, and you know, the movie just moves so well, you know, Stallone, I know Stallone didn't direct this one, but I'm sure he had a hand in it, I'm sure he helped out, he made suggestions and stuff, so the way that the film moves is just very good, very smooth, you know, it, it almost feels like they didn't edit it. Like I said, now nowadays with films, you know, and especially in some of Stallone's latest films, Bullet to the Head, Expendables 3, the editing is very choppy, you know. It's just, you can see every single cut like this. Boom, 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 boom. You can see every cut, you know, and this, it doesn't look like, you know, it's just very smooth. Like, the cuts are very smooth. It's just like here... Boom. Oh, okay, now he's going here. Oh, and then he's going over there. And then this. So, you know, the movie works really well. You know, with the, the transitions, the editing, the cinematography. All the way that that's set up, it just flows. Just flows good, like water. There you go. So, the movie's like water because of the way it flows. But, like I said, you know, this movie is just chock full of great scenes. You know, everybody remembers the eggs, you know, when Stallone's cracking the eggs and drinking the yolks. Everybody remembers when he goes and he's punching the meat, you know, gonna fly now when he's running through Philadelphia and running up the steps and everything. One day I would love to do that. One day I would love to go to Philadelphia and run up the steps. That would be amazing. You know, everybody, you know, again, you know, the scene where... Mick comes to his apartment and says, you know, you need a manager, you need you need someone that's going to help you. And he's like, no, like, you, you know, you, you make fun of me, and you pick on me in front of all the guys, and I came to you, and you didn't want to help me. I don't want your help, you know, and he's just, Rocky's just going off, you know. At least you had a prime Mick, and, and you can tell Mickey's hurt, you know, Mickey's upset, you know, he's devastated. You know, and then Rock runs outside quick and apologizes and tell him, you know, okay, you know, let's let's go, let's do this. You know, I want you to be my manager. I want you to take care of me. You know, because Mick, like Burgess Meredith, um, I believe he was nominated for an Oscar, but I mean, he should have. If he, I don't know if he won or not. I'd have to look into that, but he should have won. I mean, he was great. You know, because Mickey was like this great boxer. You know, and he was just he didn't have a lot of luck. You know, like like he said, you know, I didn't have a manager. I lost my money. You know, I didn't. I don't got nothing left. You know, he was like this great boxer who just lost it all. You know, like a lot of them do. Look at Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali lost it all, which is unfortunate. But you know, Mick. You know, Burgess Meredith. Like I said, may God rest his soul, because unfortunately he's not with us anymore. 
but he was perfect. You know, he was great as Mick. You know, in in, in all in the the first three, and then he has a cameo in Rocky Five. You know, he was great in all these films. You know, he's that that old school coach. You know, that old school trainer. You know. You're going to eat lightning and you're going to crap thunder. It's true, you know. Women, weak in legs. Everybody remembers that line. But it's true, you know. So, you know, Mick was great, you know, absolutely. That scene is a great scene. And, you know, like I said, if he didn't win, he should have won the Oscar for that. Stallone, too. Like, Stallone should have won an Oscar for this movie. But, oh, well. Oh, well, but... You know, the scenes with Adrian, you know, because, like, like, they make Adrian, like, look ugly, but Talia Shire's not an ugly woman. Like, I don't understand, like, I guess because that was the character, but, you know, she's wearing the big glasses and the, and the hat and the sweaters, and, you know, Rocky's just trying to be nice to her, you know. He comes by, you know, like he tells Paulie, you know, yo, Paulie, like, I went by to see your sister, I told her a joke in the morning, I went by in the evening, I told her the same joke, she don't laugh, you know. All he wants to do is take this girl out. And, you know, she's like, well, I don't know. You know, she's very shy. And then, yeah, you know, he goes to see her on Thanksgiving. And, you know, Paulie's like, you know, you're going to go out. You're going to have a good time, you know. You want the bird? Look, the bird can fly. You hungry, Rock? You know, and Rocky goes up to the door. And we don't know till she comes out, but she's in there changing. You know, he's like... Keeps knocking on the door. Yo, Adrian, it's Rocky. You know, I was just wondering if, you know, you'd like to go out sometime. And then he, like, he turns and then he comes back. Oh, yo, Adrian, you know, this is Rocky again. You know, I was just wondering. And then she comes out, you know, and they go on their first date, you know, with the ice skating rink. Are they closed? No, no, it's cool. Hey, we're closed. Yeah, they're closed. Come on, let you know. The doctor said she needs to come out and ice skating would be good for her. Ten dollars, ten minutes. Okay, how about like five dollars for ten minutes? About seven, seven dollars for seven minutes. Okay, and it's funny because you know Rocky was pretty much an independent film if you think about it. Um, like th when they went there to shoot, they were really closed. Like they they didn't they couldn't get the permission and stuff. So that was kind of real. Like you know like okay, well if you guys want to come here, it's gonna cost you a little bit. You know stuff like that. You know. They didn't have, like, all their permits, and, you know, they didn't have all the money and stuff to do all this stuff, so they just kind of did it. You know, that's just really cool to hear. <clears throat> you know, like I said, you don't hear, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, anymore with movies, because now everything is regulated, everything, okay, every, everything's already taken care of. You know, a film like Rocky, like, a lot of that stuff's done on the fly, you know, a lot of it, a lot of the movie was improvised and everything. But anyway, moving on. You know, they go on the date, and they're ice skating, and he's telling her the story about the pinky, and, you know, why do you fight? Well, because I can't sing or dance, you know. My father said I wasn't born with much of a brain, so I better use my body. Oh, that's what my, my father said. You weren't born with much of a body, so use your brains, you know. So you could tell that these two characters are falling in love, and then they go back to his place, and she shows, you know, the turtles and everything, you know, and he's like, I'm going to kiss you. You don't have to kiss me back. And the reason why she refused is because when they were filming that, Talia Shire was actually really sick. Like, she had the flu and all this. And she didn't want to get Stallone sick. So that's why she kept saying no. And then they did it. And then Stallone ended up getting sick. But, you know, it makes for a better movie. So, you know, crazy stuff like that. You know. And then, you know, the scene, like I said, where he gets up in the middle of the night and he goes to the Philadelphia Spectrum. You know, I'm not wearing... That's not my colors. I'm wearing white with a red stripe, not red with a white stripe. And they're like, it doesn't matter. But that's because they screwed up. The, the guys who painted that, the art department screwed that up. So that's why Stallone said that. So it's, I mean, see, it's just stuff like that. The little things like that that make this movie so good that you find out later, you know, like, oh, like that was improvised. Like, oh, that's really cool. Like, I didn't know that. The same thing with the, the robe. Like, the robe was too big. For Rocky, that's why he says, you know, oh, it's too big, you know, how do I look? Because it was too big. You know, but he goes and, and then he comes home to Adrian, you know, he's like, I can't do this, you know, I can't, I can't beat him, I can't win. You know, all I want to do is go the distance, I just want to prove that I'm not a bum, and that's what she says, you know, you will, you can do this, you know. And the scene where, you know, Paulie's, you know, getting on her, and she's like, no, she's like, 
you the way you treat me and I'm tired of this and you know he, she's just going off on him she speaks up for herself which was good yeah you know, this where they watch the press conference you know and he's like oh that stuff didn't bother me and then he leaves and he's like yeah you know what it, it did bother me and she's like I know and you know they leave but you know the scene where Mickey you know some guy called, he's looking for, you know, sparring partners for Apollo Creed. Yeah, they might be looking for sparring partners. That's what I just said, you, you know, you idiot. Or you grease ball or whatever he calls them. You know, I've been coming here for six years. And for six years, you've been giving me trouble. I want to know why. No, you don't. I want to know why. Because, you know, you could have been a contender, you know. Except you're a cheap loan shark for Gazo. It's a living, you know, and it's just going off on him. Like, you know, you could have had, you could have been somebody, you could have been something and all this. Just great, great scenes in this film, you know. And then, you know, then he goes to see the guy and tells him, you know, look, you know, we don't want a sparring partner. We want you to fight. You know, okay, you know, and Rocky accepts the challenge. You know, the, the scene previous, you know, where Carl Weathers, you know, they're trying to come up with this idea, like, who should we fight because this guy got injured. You know, who's Rocky Balboa? The, they call him the Italian Stallion. The Italian Stallion. <laughs> Sounds like a damn monster movie, you know. People will get behind this. People will love this, you know. He's he's one of the boys, you know. He's from Philadelphia. People will love this. And that's true, you know. that That's the character, you know, the underdog. Great scene. Carl Weathers, like I said, everybody in this movie was great. It was just perfectly casted. I mean, you can't have picked anybody else for this movie. And the same with little Marie, you know, you hanging out with these guys, these bums, you know, they don't remember you, they remember the rep, and it's true, you know, remember little Marie who used to hang down at the Atomic Hoagie Shop? No, who's she? Well, she liked to smoke and had a dirty mouth and all this. You know, she wasn't bad looking, but, the, you know, nobody would take her out because of her, her rep, you know. It's true, it's true. They don't remember you, they remember your reputation. That's how they remember who you are. Oh, yeah, he's cool, you know, he's all right. Oh, he's a piece of shit, you know, you, we don't want to talk to him. You know, that it's so true. Hey, Rocky, screw you, creepo. Screw you, creepo. You want to hang out with coconuts? You're going to act like a coconut. Got to use a bad word. Whore. <laughs> it's, it's great. Great stuff. But, you know, Rocky, I like I said, how do you, like, review a film like Rocky? A film that it's just so well-known a film that everybody knows about everybody's seen at least once you know never gets old the original film at least well not to me none of them get old but you know most people say well the sequels suck eh, whatever shut up but you know this film never gets old none of them do like i said to me i love all the rocky films even rocky five i like rocky five but anyway guys um just wrapping this up here but rocky is definitely a classic I mean, again, how do you review a film that's already been reviewed a million times, number one? And number two, it's just a film that everybody knows about, everybody loves, you know. It's just one of those movies. But anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my review of Rocky. And stay tuned because next I'm going to review, um, actually review a few underrated Stallone films, starting with Fist. So thank you guys for watching, and sayonara, take care. Bye-bye.